Hi everyone, welcome to today's topic from number theory, the Gaussian division algorithm. Before we define the Gaussian division algorithm, let's quickly revise what Euclid's division algorithm is. Now, if you recall, in Euclid's division algorithm, we say if j and k are two integers such that k is non-zero, then when k divides j, there will exist integers q and r such that j is is equal to kq plus r that is j by k can be written as j is equal to k q plus r where q will be the quotient and r will be the remainder r is always greater than or equal to 0 it can be 0 but it's always positive and it will be less than k in this type of division the quotient q and r are always unique let us see what is gaussian division algorithm what if we are given two gaussian integers alpha and beta such that beta is non zero then if if beta divides alpha, there exist Gaussian integers gamma and delta such that alpha is equal to beta gamma plus delta and the norm of delta is greater than or equal to 0 and less than norm of beta. In Euclid's division algorithm, you saw when we divide j by k, we can write it as k times q plus r where your q and r are integers. but when we divide one Gaussian integer by the other, we might not get our gamma and delta as Gaussian integers. So then how do we write alpha is equal to beta gamma plus delta? Let's look at the method. Let us say we are given Gaussian integers alpha and beta such that beta is not equal to zero and beta divides alpha. Then there exist Gaussian integers gamma and delta such that alpha is equal to beta gamma plus delta. Now there will be three cases. First that a delta is zero and gamma is a Gaussian integer. In that case beta beta will divide alpha and we will be able to write alpha as beta gamma. Second case, when our delta is not equal to zero and gamma and delta both are Gaussian integers, in that case beta will divide alpha and we will be able to write alpha is equal to beta gamma plus delta. Now, the third case, what if when we divide alpha by beta, we find that our gamma and delta are not Gaussian integers. Then what do we do? In that case, we round off the fractions of gamma and delta to the nearest integers and let's call them S and T. Then we find delta by subtracting beta S from alpha. All this would be clear when we come to the examples. In the first example, we are given 4 plus i divides 9 minus 2i. Now, how do we write it as alpha is equal to beta gamma plus delta? Let's start by dividing 9 minus 2i by 4 plus i. You will see when we rationalize by multiplying and dividing by 4 minus i, we would be getting 2 minus i. Now, this is the first case. As we have a delta 0, you can write 9 minus 2i is 4 plus i into 2 minus i and your delta which is 0, let's write it as 0 plus 0i. Let's come to an example where our delta is not 0. So, we divide 9 minus 2i by 2 plus i. Let us rationalize this. So we will multiply and divide by 2 minus i. On simplifying, we'll be getting 16 by 5 minus 13 by 5 i. You can see 16 by 5 is not an integer and 13 by 5 is not an integer. So what we will do is we will round them off to the nearest integer. 16 by 5 we round off as 3 and 13 by 5 as 2. Now that will give us gamma is equal to 3 minus 2i. Now if you remember to find delta, we use delta is equal to alpha minus beta gamma. Put alpha 
beta and gamma. Alpha you know is 9 minus 2i. From that we subtract the product beta into gamma. Beta is 2 plus i and gamma we've just formed which is 3 minus 2i. When you simplify you will get delta is equal to 1 minus i. Now we can write our 9 minus 2i which is alpha is equal to beta which is 2 plus i into gamma which is 3 minus 2i plus delta and our delta is nothing but 1 minus i. If you simplify the right hand side will be nothing but 9 minus 2i. Let us now check the condition 0 is less than equal to norm of delta is less than norm of beta. 0 is less than equal to norm of delta which is 1 minus i less than norm of 2 plus i is satisfied. You can see norm of 1 minus i is 2 and norm of 2 plus i is 5 and this holds true. In the beginning I had mentioned that our gamma and delta are not unique. For the same example we will try to see in how many different ways we can write our 9 minus 2i with different gamma and delta. So as you know 9 minus 2i upon 2 plus i was nothing but 16 by 5 minus 13 by 5i. If we now round off 16 by 5 and take it as 4 as 16 by 5 is 3 point something and 13 by 5 we take as 3 then our gamma would be nothing but 4 minus 3i and our delta would be 9 minus 2i minus beta which is 2 plus i into 4 minus 3i that is our gamma. This gives us our delta as minus 2. So now our 9 minus 2i 2 plus i into 4 minus 3i plus delta which is minus 2. You can simplify and see it will give us 9 minus 2i. Now let's check the condition 0 is less than equal to norm of delta which is minus 2 less than norm of beta. You know that norm of delta which is minus 2 and norm of beta would be 2 plus i holds as this gives us norm of minus 2 plus 4 which is less than norm of 2 plus 1 which is 5. We have yet another way of writing a 9 minus 2i. Let's see. What if we take our gamma to be 3 minus 3i? In this case, we will get our delta as 9 minus 2i minus 2 plus i into 3 minus 3i. When you simplify, you will get delta as i. If you write your 9 minus 2i, you will see it would be nothing but 2 plus i into 3 minus 3i plus i. Simplify the right hand side, that would give you 9 minus 2i. Let's check the condition. 0 is less than equal to norm of delta which is i less than norm of beta which is 2 plus i. If you find the norms you will see 0 is less than equal to 1 because norm of i is 1 less than norm of 2 plus i which you have already seen is 5. This also holds. So you have just seen when 9 minus 2i is divided by 2 plus i it can be written in these three different forms. In the first case you can see our gamma is 3 minus 2i and delta is 1 minus i. In the second case gamma is 4 minus 3i and delta is minus 2 and in the third case our gamma is 3 minus 3i and delta is i. So you have just seen in Gaussian division algorithm when we divide alpha by beta, the two Gaussian integers gamma and delta, they are not unique. You have just seen we get different forms. Thank you for watching. Our next video will be on finding the GCD of Gaussian integers. For detailed notes and practice problems, you can watch my website profprithibashpe.com.